When it comes to the beginning of civilization in Egypt, the Nile was everything. It was the giver and the sustainer of life. The Nile is the largest river in the world. Its southernmost origin is in Rwanda in Central Africa. It flows from south to north, winding its way through 4,000 miles of grasslands, mountains, and desert. As early as 6000 BC, humans began to settle along its river valley. The Nile's seasonal flooding provided rich, fertile soil in the floodplains, which enabled harvest to yield large crops and allowed the human population to explode. During the fourth millennium BC, two kingdoms emerged, the lower kingdom in the north and the upper kingdom in the south. Around 3200 BC, the two were united and the new unified kingdom stretched 600 miles along the Nile. This unification would eventually culminate in the great kingdom ages of the pharaohs, named by the historians as the Old Kingdom, the Middle Kingdom, and the New Kingdom. This 1700 year stretch marked a time of supreme rule by the pharaoh and the flourishing of the arts, commerce, science, and medicine. The flourishing of the arts, particularly architecture, met with the absolute rule of the pharaoh in the form of the pyramids. These pyramids are great burial tombs believed to help the pharaoh in achieving eternal life after death. The first of the pyramids we have knowledge of was built by Imhotep under the pharaoh Zoser, the first pharaoh of the Old Kingdom. His pyramid was constructed at Saqqara around 2800 BC. Also during the Old Kingdom, the three pyramids at Giza were built. The largest of the three, often referred to as the Great Pyramid, was built for the Pharaoh Khufu around 2540 BC. It took 20 years to build and after its completion it was the tallest building in the world for over 3800 years. Of the seven wonders of the ancient world, it is the only one still standing. It's in the New Kingdom, however, where we find some of ancient Egypt's most legendary pharaohs and its most remarkable temples. King Tutankhamun ruled during this era. He is referred to as the Boy King because he ascended the throne at the age of nine and would die only ten years later. His tomb lies in the Valley of the Kings near Luxor and was never plundered like so many others. When his tomb was discovered in 1922, hundreds of artifacts were recovered along with his mummy, most notably his burial mask. Today we are still intrigued by the mystery surrounding his death. Only 19 when he died, the cause of death could not have been a natural one. The mummy of this boy king has been x-rayed several times since the 1960s, and he underwent a CT scan in 2005. Experts concluded that a break in his leg caused gangrene, from which he subsequently died. The New Kingdom's most powerful pharaoh, however, was Ramses II. He ascended the throne in 1279 BC in his early 20s and he ruled for 66 years. He had many wives and the most famous one was Nefertari and he had over 100 children. He waged military campaigns in modern day Syria and Israel to the east, Nubia to the south and Libya to the west. He was the pharaoh of the Old Testament during the exodus of Moses and his followers. The monuments built for him at Abu Simbel, Ramesium, Luxor, and Karnak are a testament to his power.
With the end of autonomous Egyptian rule after the fall of the New Kingdom, several area powers would come to reign over Egypt. Among those were the Ethiopians, the Libyans, and the Nubians. Then after 500 years, two of the great empires of the day invaded and established rule. The first of these were the Persians in 517 BC. Darius and Xerxes also ruled during this time. Persian rule would end when Alexander the Great defeated Darius III in 332 BC. Alexander the Great would install the Greek Ptolemies as the rulers of Egypt. The Ptolemies established the great Mediterranean city of Alexandria and made it their capital. The most famous Ptolemaic ruler was Cleopatra, the Queen of the Nile. Stories of love and intrigue surrounding her life and rule would become the stuff of literature. Cleopatra had affairs with Julius Caesar and then Mark Antony after Caesar's death. Shakespeare and Bernard Shaw both wrote plays concerning the love affair between Cleopatra and Caesar's friend Mark Antony. Egypt wouldn't come under Roman rule until after Mark Antony fought in a civil war against Caesar's nephew Octavian. When Mark Antony was defeated at Actium, he committed suicide. Cleopatra did the same. <laughs>